what are they doing in this video? Is it a recipe for date night? No, this is homemade sunscreen. Making your own sunscreen at home. Is it safer? Is it better? Is it an insane thing to do? This month and probably the last few months have been the craziest months for sunscreen myths and hacks. Everyone wants to just not wear regular sunscreen. <laughs> and they want to do all kinds of insane things. So in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the craziest things we've seen online, including this video, homemade sunscreens. Homemade sunscreen and sunscreen hacks. Here we go. Here we go. First off, we'd like to thank Alta MD for sponsoring this video. First of all, this is a bobblehead that Alta MD made of me, which looks nothing like me. And in fact, they made almost the exact same bobblehead for Chris Damasian, which looks identical to this one. Does yours look exactly the same? It does. Actually, my son sees mine and he says, oh, it's Dr. Shaw. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> good all right, I love it. I still love it. This is 15 anniversary 15 years of Alta MD UV Clear and we've been talking about it as long as we've had a channel which has been four years and you've seen it appear at least a dozen times so shout out to Alta MD for sponsoring this video we love this product because one it's blendable two it has 5% niacinamide which also has those skincare benefits and three because it works yeah, this is easily, easily, not only the first, but one of the most recommended sunscreens on the channel, but also in person in the clinic. One of the dermatologists first choice when recommending a sunscreen, probably across the board. So like, obviously not everybody, but generalizably, we recommend this all the time. And now they actually have three different shade ranges. So they have the regular one, which is untinted. Then they have a kind of like a medium tinted one. This is the one that I use. And then they also have a deep tinted one for darker skin tones. And so now they have an additional shade, which is amazing. It gives you more availability, gives you more flexibility, gives you more blendability. So first up, homemade sunscreens. In the video that we were watching earlier, they put a specific set of ingredients in it. So let's go through what was in that video. They did coconut, beeswax, shea butter, cocoa butter, jojoba oil, and zinc oxide powder. So let's go through these one by one. <sighs> to be honest, until he puts the zinc oxide powder in there, it sounds like an amazing moisturizer. Like the combination of beeswax, shea butter, coconut butter, jojoba oil, I'm just imagining this is like a great film for your skin, a lot of hydration. And then he adds uh, unfortunate unquantified amount of zinc oxide, which is the only significant filter in this recipe. And that only one that I would really think would carry some weight, but how much? Like it looked like a small amount to me relative to the overall portion of the recipe. Some of these, like if you look at coconut oil, if you look at jojoba oil, maybe they have some SPF level. Some people will say coconut oil has an SPF of seven, right? Now our goal is to get it to a consistent SPF level of 30. And when you add the zinc oxide in there, it does need to be at a higher concentration to achieve that recommended SPF 30 level. So it looks like they sprinkled it in there a little bit. And the truth is you just won't know what the protection level is. Now sunscreens in the United States are heavily regulated by the FDA. First, you can only use certain filters that qualify and zinc is one of them. They go through specific SPF testing to make sure that they actually block the amount of UVB rays they are intended to block. Now, why is this important is because UVB rays are known to cause skin cancer. We wear sunscreen not because, you know, it's a vanity thing. You know, it definitely does help prevent wrinkles. It definitely does help to prevent hyperpigmentation, but a lot of people are wearing sunscreen to prevent sunburn and skin cancer. When you use something that's homemade, when you don't know what the concentration is of the zinc in the formula, or how well it's gonna block you against UVB rays, you're just not gonna get the adequate protection. Though it did look like a well-made product, I will say that. And so I would actually say this too, the knock isn't entirely against the effort because I think a big part of what we want to do is empower people to take care of your skin at home, do as much as you can at home. The question of sunscreen is like, is this something that should be done at home? And the answer is probably not. And here's the other logical side of it. If every year we are having sunscreen scandals about the SPF rating not being met, whether it's an American or non-American sunscreen, it's a worldwide problem where companies who already are using independent labs to test the SPF value, the sun protection factor, and it's not living up to that on occasion, it seems highly unlikely that we as individuals, uh, just normal people, would be able to create a consistent product with consistent benefits and consistent protection for something as important as sunscreen, because like Dr. Shaw said, the majority of your skin aging isn't actually from time, it's from sun damage, and the vast majority of skin cancers are related directly to sun exposure. All right, so now let's go on to the next thing that we've seen online, and this is coming from an Instagram post or a tweet, and here's what the text says, I'll read it out loud. 
If you're concerned about sunscreen safety, a mineral-based zinc or titanium dioxide up to 25% concentration version is generally agreed upon as safe. People debate chemical-based sunscreen safety. No one debates a physical barrier. And this is from a very well-trusted and respected scientific creator online, let's say. When we look at the different types of sunscreens that are available out there, really is kind of three buckets. And we've talked about this before, but there is the mineral-based sunscreens, and these are zinc and titanium. They're also called inorganic sunscreens. And then you have the chemical-based sunscreens, which are called organic sunscreens. And these include things like avobenzone, octanoxate, oxybenzone, and on and on and on. And then you have the hybrid sunscreens, which is usually a combination of a zinc-based sunscreen or titanium-based sunscreen and a chemical-based sunscreen. They put them together and they kind of amplify the effects. And so you're able to get the physical sunscreen without as much of a white cast, generally, is what these hybrid sunscreens are able to accomplish. And usually you're able to get better UVA protection in the process. This is generally what you see available on the market. In this though, there is like an always and never statement. And that is like no one debates the safety of a physical filter, right? And I think that's in and of itself, perhaps not quite true, but I understand the sentiment. We actually experience this a lot in the office. We experience this in real life. Some people come in with a predetermined and preconceived idea that is unmovable, that they will use nothing except mineral filters. And with that, you kind of have to live there, acknowledge it and recommend something. But I would say that when it comes to effectiveness, both are effective. And when it comes to safety, there's a lot of data behind both showing that both mineral and chemical sunscreens are actually quite safe when used as intended. There is a debate about chemical sunscreen safety. So I agree with this tweet or this Instagram post about it being debated. Like Dr. Maxfield said, a lot of people still debate the safety of mineral sunscreens as well. So it's not universally accepted as safe, but chemical sunscreens are definitely debated more. And a lot of people come into our office and they say, I'm not going to use a chemical sunscreen. What do you do at that point? I usually generally say like, I personally use chemical sunscreens. I recommend chemical sunscreens to my family members. But if you don't want to use chemical sunscreens, here are some other options that are pure mineral sunscreens, right? I'm not gonna try to convince anybody to do anything differently. I'll tell them what I personally do and hopefully they trust my own recommendations. But if not, then I, I will, I'll recommend mineral sunscreens. And I think that that is completely reasonable. That being said, the FDA does consider zinc and titanium sunscreens to be generally regarded as safe and effective. So I don't actually think there's anything quite problematic about the messaging here. The only thing is it signals that chemical sunscreens are less safe or could be less safe or could create concern for chemical sunscreens because there's not too much nuance in this post because there is some studies that show that chemical sunscreens absorbed more into the body than we previously thought. But just because they absorbed more into the body than we previously thought doesn't mean that it has any untoward effect on the body. Just because something is increased absorption under these conditions that no one really uses sunscreen, which is like dousing your body and high levels of sunscreen multiple times a day and more concentrations than you would ever wear sunscreen, doesn't mean that it actually is going to cause any harm on the body. It's just that it's absorbed more than we thought. That's where a lot of the fear comes from, but there's no indication that chemical sunscreens or physical sunscreens really cause any harm in anyone. Like Dr. Shaw said, the mineral and chemical sunscreens both have a benefit. The effectiveness, again, isn't what's up for debate. This is quantified objective, something you can rely on. Chemical and mineral, both effective, and they have complementing benefits. So this is where the formulation comes into play. Some filters are particularly good against UVA. Some are particularly good against UVB. He mentioned that you can actually boost the effectiveness of another ingredient by adding another filter. And that's why these hybrid sunscreens have a role. You can take a formulation, create a completely or very effective sunscreen, and then couple it and improve the aesthetics of it by having a nice filter combination. And so hybrids, sometimes you're gonna get the best of both worlds. When I look at chemical sunscreens, I think blendability. These are generally going to be invisible with no white cast if they're made well. And then zinc-based sunscreens or titanium or physical sunscreens generally have a white cast or a slight white cast. And that's why tinted sunscreens are super effective to kind of blend in with multiple different types of skin tones. Chemical sunscreens tend to be more likely to cause allergy where mineral sunscreens are less likely to cause allergy. So they both have their pros and cons. And we always say to people, you got to find a sunscreen you love and you got to wear it every single day because the sunscreen that he loves and the sunscreen that I love are going to be very different than the sunscreens that you potentially love. So it's a lot of trial and error to find a sunscreen that you love. Just look for a sunscreen that has a minimum of an SPF of 30 and I will be very, very happy with you. Right. That's the least we would hope that you would do to protect your skin and have good, healthy skin. Now, because it is Alpha MD UV clears 15th, 50th, 
15th? 15th anniversary. <laughs> this is a hybrid sunscreen. So this has both octanoxate and zinc oxide, which is why it's so blendable compared to most sunscreens. Now, the first one I ever used was actually the UV clear untinted, but then once I realized there was a tinted version, the medium tint became the version that I really fell in love with. This one also has niacinamide, like I said, so it helps to regulate oil production, but it also makes it really good for people with blemish prone skin. So anyone who has acne prone skin, this is a really good option for you as well. Right, and niacinamide is a great supporting ingredient for any sunscreen. It just complements so many other skin conditions, whether it's anything from blemishes to the signs of skin aging, it's extremely helpful across the board. Now, I really wanted to show you the three different shades that are available. Now, this deep tint is gonna be really nice for people with darker skin tones, but this is how they all three line up. You gotta find the one that's gonna blend best for your skin and the one that you like the most. So I personally like both the non-tinted and then the medium tone one matches with my skin particularly well. It feels extremely gentle on the skin. It's hydrating. It kind of doubles as that like hydrating moisturizer, sun protection if you want to simplify your routine. Both of these sit well for me, both great options. And you can see how well it blends into both of our skins. We have different skin tones and you can see that even though this one is the middle one for both of us, it blends really, really well. And the next one that's particularly pervasive is the idea that you need to get sun exposure, particularly if you don't get enough sun exposure, you'll actually have vitamin D deficiency. So is there any validity to that claim? So there are two messages within the one message. The first is that you need sunlight exposure for vitamin D synthesis. This is in fact true. So the way it works is the sun UVB converts pro-vitamin D to pre-vitamin D, and then in a temperature dependent manner, it's isoisomerized, then activated by the liver and the kidneys to become active functional vitamin D. So at the beginning of the whole pathway, UVB does have a role. The second part of that messaging was that if you apply sunscreen implied is that you will not be able to synthesize vitamin D because you're blocking the sun. And interestingly, it just doesn't seem to be true. It does speak to perhaps the imperfection or the incomplete application or the small amount of UV that does get through sunscreen. So albeit imperfect, it actually satisfies a need because that little bit that gets through is enough for us to create vitamin D that's sufficient for our body. So if you're using sunscreen adequately, you'll still get enough vitamin D production by the skin that you wouldn't be vitamin D deficient. Despite that, most people, especially in Northern Hemisphere, are vitamin D deficient, and that could be related to just sunlight exposure in general. It could be due to the UV index in general, and many people are still going to need to supplement vitamin D by taking them through either their diets or through a supplement. The sun interacts with cholesterol in your skin to produce vitamin D. It is a complicated pathway, but in the end, you do need sunlight to produce vitamin D, and about 80% of the vitamin D that we get is actually from the sun and from our skin synthesizing vitamin D and actually not from our diets. You need to get vitamin D. Vitamin D is a very important vitamin, but wearing sunscreen doesn't seem to affect the vitamin D synthesis as long as you're getting sunlight at all. And there's actually been a plethora of studies on this. Many, many studies, and a lot of it started in the Australia literature. Australia has the highest rates of melanoma, and so they were the biggest proponents from a national objective of pushing sunscreen out there to the public. And so sunscreen use in mass at higher SPF levels was seen first in Australia and then it spread to the rest of the world. And so a lot of the data comes out of Australia and it doesn't seem to affect vitamin D levels. Now I want to read you a few excerpts from multiple different studies that I read. So first conclusion, there is little evidence that sunscreen decreases vitamin D concentration when used in real life settings, suggesting that concerns about vitamin D should not negate skin cancer prevention advice. However, there have been no trials on high SPF sunscreens that are widely recommended, and so more data needs to be shown, so like Dr. Maxfield said. Second thing is, although 50 plus sunscreen decreases significant cutaneous vitamin D production, so there was another study that showed that it did increase cutaneous vitamin D production when you were using an SPF 50 or greater, but what they said was that it did not affect circulating levels of vitamin D. Now they don't know why that seemed to happen, even though it was somehow decreasing vitamin D concentration locally, it seemed that your body was still able to produce enough vitamin D not to affect the levels in your body. The next thing was endogenous vitamin D can easily be produced through ultraviolet 
light exposure. Only a small amount of exposed skin is needed to produce vitamin D. So now if you're not using sunscreen in your hair and you're not using sunscreen on your chest while you're wearing clothes, you're still going to get sunlight exposure that may be enough to produce vitamin D. So ultimately there's enough studies and suggestions to show that even though despite most of America is actually vitamin D deficient, about 40% of people are vitamin D deficient, it doesn't seem to be due to sunscreen use. I don't think it's interesting, but the whole constellation of all that effect really just equates to real life use. So real life, we have different habits, we have different imperfections, we have different routines, and it seems like all of that collectively is enough to produce enough vitamin D regardless of sunscreen. I do actually think the sun is a good thing. Personally, I think it affects my mood if I don't get enough sun exposure in general, but I still protect my skin when I'm in the sun because one, I had skin cancer, and two, because I don't want to get wrinkles much sooner <laughs> than everybody else. And so ultimately, there's two really good reasons that I wear sunscreen. You got to figure out the reasons that you want to wear sunscreen, but it doesn't seem that there's any negative effects of wearing sunscreen over time that have been proven. And there's no reason you should be not using it because of getting vitamin D synthesis. Right. I agree. I think the health benefits of the sun are legitimate, especially for mental health. I'm a big proponent of being outside active, whether you're running, surfing, fishing, whatever. You can be in the sun avoidance camp. That's fine. I'm more in the sun protection camp. Live life, have fun, ha have an adventure. Kind of like my phrase for life. But either way, protecting your skin is, is like definitely the best way forward. Now, the last sunscreen hack I've been seeing online, and this one is a little peculiar, but I want to talk about it. So this is the idea of using a makeup brush to apply your sunscreen. So what people are saying online is that when you wear a sunscreen, especially a mineral-based sunscreen, it may not blend that well with your skin, but if you apply it with a makeup brush, they're finding that it blends in smoother, it's more of even application, and then they can kind of brush it out so that it blends better with their neck and their face. What are your thoughts on this? Is this something that you should be doing, should not be doing? First, let me look up a makeup brush. You don't know what a makeup brush looks like. This is, okay, yeah, so I, I've felt these. So I paint, not anymore. I haven't painted in like five years. This brush in particular, the reason I say this is because when you paint with oils or with uh, acrylic, some of the brushes are like fairly stiff, have wide bristles. And so I'm imagining applying your sunscreen with those is actually going to lead to a very uneven application. This, however, these are very soft. They're not going to distribute it in an awkward way. I think you're gonna get an even application. And I do believe that it's gonna be helpful with your blend. Like just like when you're blending out an edge on a canvas, if you're blending this out, it's gonna help it fade and fan into the skin, be less obvious, less apparent, where you have and haven't used it. So I like, the only question is, is like, how much is the brush going to absorb? Is it, do you need to perhaps over apply to compensate for that? That's a possibility. 100% be my recommendation. So you, in exactly that direction. Just like if you were to apply makeup with your hands, you're not gonna get the even application. It's not gonna blend smoothly. It's gonna be lumpy, bumpy. And so use a makeup brush for the same reason. So I actually don't think it's unreasonable to apply a sunscreen using a makeup brush. That being said, some of that is going to get absorbed into the makeup brush. So I would apply slightly more, not like double, the amount, but slightly more just to compensate from the absorption from the brush. But there's no other reason, there's no reason why this would affect the efficacy of your sunscreen, and there's no reason why you can't do this. So if this is something that's gonna make you wanna wear sunscreen more, I actually think it's a really good hack, especially if you're using like a tinted sunscreen or something that has a little bit more coverage. Now, I think what people are doing with sunscreen as a replacement for makeup these days is great. It's wild sometimes. Um, I know it's not, this one, not a perfect hack, but when you use different sunscreens to like create different shadowing, it's, it's it's impressive, uh, perhaps imperfect because you're blending sunscreens, efficacy possibly dips, but uh, people are creative with sunscreens. I love it, I think it's great. And that kind of gets into the question of whether or not sunscreen in your makeup is enough protection. And when you see a, uh, a makeup that says SPF 30 on it or SPF 50 on it, it still went through the same testing that any sunscreen is going to go through. So it does give you that protection. It's just that you need to use the amount that you would use of a normal sunscreen. So that's two finger lengths for the entire face, neck, and ears. Now you probably aren't going to be wearing that much makeup or coverage. And so you probably won't be using enough to get the intended SPF label. So yes, makeup on your sunscreen does work exactly how it's intended to work. You just need to be using enough. So that pretty much wraps up the craziness that we've been seeing online. Some of the hacks we like, 
some of the hacks we don't like as much. And so we're always here to debunk misinformation. Let us know if you see anything else crazy online. Now, Elta MD is doing 15% off for a brief, a very limited time. So definitely go check out the link in our description. Check out the product from UV Clear. It's been 15 years, so 15% off. Uh, you're probably, many of you, if you've been following us for a long time, are probably already using a sunscreen, so you might need a refill. So definitely check them out. Now, if you have a darker skin tone, you may want to check out this new deeper tint that they have. Yeah, it's perfect. If you've ever seen a dermatologist and asked about sunscreen, this has probably been brought up at some point. So now's a good time to check it out and see why. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. We'll see you next time.